So today we're gonna do a read switch. When you get it, when you get a package to switch your read switch, it's gonna be this. So this is gonna be the actual read switch. You get the wire that's going to be longer than what you need, depending upon how you'd like to put it together. You're gonna get two of those, which go right over the, uh, the axle that we have in there, and then the uh, wire nuts. So the first thing you need to do, whether you have a rain logger, um, a full blown rain gauge on an MK3, which is what this would look like. Same thing, as you can see, it's just the actual arm. Or just detached it from the unit. You don't do that when you um, go ahead and do this. Usually it's just for demonstrative purposes. Uh, so it's going to be a PH1. Um, if you are doing one on the MK3, this screw right here is actually quite the pain because you have such like small amount of clearance between the uh, shields and the ring gauge bucket itself. So you're gonna need a long shaft to actually get it down in there and appropriately screw it in and take it out. So keep that in mind if you're using uh, manual or electric screwdrivers. As you can see, I have an extension and then it's not really meant to have something on the end of that. So uh, we're working with it. Also, when you take these out, you don't necessarily want to um, go ahead and take these out fully. I'm just doing it so I have enough clearance that I can actually turn this and detach it. Uh, especially on standalone units. Last thing you want to do is drop a screw and then not be able to find it. So it's going to be about, I don't know, an inch counterclockwise. So then we have the actual tip of bucket. And then below that is the reed switch. This reed switch does not need to be changed, but we're going to need to. So that was a pH 2 for the outsides. This is going to be a pH 1 for the inside. Which we're just taking these two screws off. I don't know how I can see that. Right there and right there. Okay. And I also would take note of how far away our reed switch and our magnet are, because that's gonna make a big difference on if it's actually counting appropriately. But if you listen real carefully, you can hear the reed switch open and close. You have to be in a pretty quiet spot to do that. But it's once it goes past that middle point, you hear a little tink, 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 each time it opens and it closes. All right, I should we'll deal with that afterwards. So we're going to pull these off, and we're going to be careful not to lose them. For the most part, you're going to need to pull these entirely. Um, the only time you're going to need to remove this is if you want to do a lot more work. <laughs> so, and again, this is what your reed switch looks like. I have the axle tabs and the two little, I don't even know what you would actually call those, but the two items that we use to uh, kind of space them. And they just lost one of the crystals, but anyways. So the switch comes out, you can see the hole that it's mounted in. This part is easy. Strippers and cut as high as you can up to the reed switch. You can always cut more off, you can't put more wire there. Um, and so this is if you are not going to feed the wire through this and back up into here, which is actually what the intended purpose is, but we've sealed it. So in an effort to make it as friendly as possible, we're gonna do it this way, which is how a lot of the items go. So I'm just stripping the casing. And I'm using 
the 22 gauge setting, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 22. All right. So as you can see, I stripped off the tips of these wires. Pretty easy. Now I'm going to take my new stuff out. So realistically, the only things you're going to need to save from your old one are the two axle tabs, bada bing, your actual axle rod, and your tipper. All right, all that's out of here. As you can see, these are already pre-stripped for you, but the problem is we're not going to leave the wire that long, generally. Two more of these spacers. Where nuts. All right, so that being the case, put all your stuff over here along with the other items I need. First thing I'm going to do is actually attach the reed switch. Pretty easy. The wire goes towards the other wire, so this piece should be facing over here. It goes against the two posts, basically. So as you can see, I haven't done it yet, but that's what it should look like. Hopefully that's in focus. And so I'm just going to snug it right down, trying to go in the actual uh, same hole that was already there. Obviously, stripping the wire is not a good choice. So I want to cut it so it's away from what's going to be here, which is going to be the tipper and obviously the rod and all that good stuff. It's going to end up over here, something like that. And I want to make the wire nuts connect them somewhere around here. Just keep it away from everything else. So I need at least this much wire. I'd probably go a little bit more just in case. Like I said, you can always cut more off. You can't put more there. So I'm gonna cut it right here. That's my excess wire, unnecessary. I'm just gonna do the same thing with this wire, right? I'm just gonna, it's awkward to hold it like this and show somebody, forgive me. But right here. Now, I don't know, maybe half an inch, quarter of an inch, half an inch in between there. That's all I'm taking off. As you can see, pretty close. And so it doesn't matter which wires you connect to which, as long as one of these goes to one of these. One of these to one of these. You're just trying to make sure there's continuity. So at that point, I'm going to make a giant mess of my area, and then I'm going to put them behind this post. I can't see my hand there, behind this post. Keep them away. Just twist them together. I'm going to strip a little bit more off that one because that one's uncooperative. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're definitely leaning towards the half inch mark. Alright, so what else we're we doing? Maybe you. And I just have the two wires together. And I'm just twisting like such. So I twist together. And then I'm just gonna fold this over. It should look something like that. It's not the best job I've ever done in my life, but it gets the point across. So now that to use a wire nut, all you're gonna do is place it down and turn. And with the turn, what it's going to do is actually, if you're not familiar, thread it. You can't really see in there, but it's got like um interior of like a, if you had a match to a screw. That's what it looks like. So it just coils it up and kind of meshes them together. So I'm gonna do the same. Also keeping it on this side of the post because I need to make sure that it's not going to hinder the tipper assembly, okay? So again, two wires next to one another and I'm just twisting. Ooh. This is not really fun to do against my chest. 
by twisting, trying to keep it so you can see it as much as possible. And I want the two components, the, the two wires to actually be as even as possible. So the casing for one generally matches up to the casing of another. It's pretty similar to um, like parallel parking when you go ahead and line up your mirrors or your seats or your trunks or however you end up doing it personally. Um, similar thought. And you possibly will stab yourself with some wires, so be careful. All right, so like I said, not the best job I've ever done in my life, but for all intents and purposes, that is going to work. So it's one of these wires to one of these wires, another one to that one. Does not matter which is which. So at this point, it's connected. I'm okay with it. Sometimes I'll give these a little tuck just to make sure. But that's the essential uh, process that you'll be doing. And so then when you put this back on, this magnet needs to match up to this. That's the actual reading there. So I'm gonna thread this axle back through. Sometimes while I have it out here, I might clean this out. Um, and so these, my horrible hands, go like this. As you look at it, that's how it should be. It's going to go on this unit as such. Before I put this on, you see this little groove right here? That's where the rod's going to fit. The rod is going to end before these actual holes, right? So what you're doing at this point, as you can see it's sitting on there and I have my spacers and the spacers are basically there to make sure that you have enough room but not too much room. So now I'm going to take one of these, hold it in place, and uh, now the thing that you want to be mindful of, this is the part where it's going to be probably the most difficult truthfully and it's really not that hard at all. What you're looking for is making sure that that space at its maximum, it's not too far away from that, too far away from the actual root switch because you need that magnet to make a connection. And it actually does right there at that much of a distance, but that's too much in my opinion. Yeah, I think it leaves too much up to chance. So I'm just gonna turn this slightly so that that is pushing this away a little bit more, the spacer. So that it brings a little closer to the root switch. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. And what I'm trying to do by doing this is actually eliminate too much wiggle room, but you want some. So I want to see it move. That's actually a little bit too much. I'm just going to push this over. And so these tabs should be tapping against the, the, the wider side of those spacers. You don't want them sitting on top of it because that will actually create an uneven bucket and just create issues when it's actually tipping it won't tip appropriately. Uh, but that is the basis of what you're doing and again I'm going to tip this just so I can hear that noise. I wish you guys could. But, but uh, it's very noticeable to me now. When I first started I couldn't hear it for the life of me. So then place this right back on little turn, all the latches are in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead, put the appropriate top on. And, <laughs> nobody saw that. Uh, just tighten it down. And again, like I said, if you are doing it on a Mark three, this screw right here, which is gonna be abutting the rest of the unit, it's gonna be the one with the least amount of clearance for you. So you're gonna need a pretty long shaft, or otherwise you're gonna strip your screws, or uh, improperly thread it when you are putting it back in. But that's pretty much it. Okay, guys, have a good day.